не простить, что вертикально, но тут очень много полиции. The shot has turned sideways, but we could not help this. There are a great number of police officers. This is a huge building, around 10 floors tall, where coronavirus patients are brought. They reserved this back door for bringing in people who have a fever, taking them through some convoluted path to separate these people from other patients. Only then can you enter the facility where they treat the patients, or those suspected to be coronavirus patients. So here is the situation. I was detained and I spent the entire day with the police. I'm not going to tell you everything now, because up to now I have been accompanied in my travels from town to town. My friends, everything you are about to see will also have been reviewed by the Chinese officers who now have my name, my address and all my personal information. So, first and foremost, I want to express my great gratitude to the Chinese police for seriously taking all the measures to fight coronavirus, as well as for their careful examination of the contents of my backpack after which they returned it with several flash drives that still contain some footage. At the end of this video, I will tell you how it went. So, remember my friends, that everything I'm going to tell you here has already been heard by the brave Chinese police officers. My friends, I am Liadov, and I'm in China. Right now, I intend to go to the Hubei province, which as many of you know already is described as a source of coronavirus. This is where the city of Wuhan is, where the coronavirus story started. I want to see how the people there are living. Don't get me wrong, I'm not crazy. I studied the medical side of the issue quite carefully, so I know what I'm doing. The most difficult part now is not the virus, but the Chinese police. First of all, the Chinese have one of the world's most vigilant police forces. Presently, they are being especially careful to catch anyone who films anything at all in the proximity of the Hubei border. So, let's see what becomes of this. China, zone of infection. There are cases of coronavirus infection in Thailand, Australia, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore. There are already several infected people in other parts of the world, like Europe, France, or Canada, and one person died in America. A number of startling videos with people shaking with fever, falling to the ground before they can stretch their arms forward, and other weird stuff has made the coronavirus issue into the most discussed topic in the latest months. But in reality, the world's media outlets garner attention by showing guys walking around China in cooler bottles, building portable plastic houses, wrapping themselves in diapers or in a bra, rather than trying to figure out if the new virus is actually as dangerous as the sensational news says it is. The fact that half of these videos are absolutely fake, like this alleged coronavirus panic where people are not actually wearing masks and it is in fact the warm season, not winter, does not seem to bother anyone. The main problem concerning the new virus is that there are almost no scientifically proven facts about it. One of the few tangible results of any research showed that the transmission area around an infected person is six feet. You can catch it not just by being coughed at. It takes just the tiniest of saliva that flies out of the mouth when someone speaks. We cannot even see it. The symptoms we know now are coughing, diarrhea, vomiting, headache, and a compressed sensation in the chest. What distinguishes the virus from its predecessors is the speed of transmission. For example, if the ordinary flu affects 45 people in a given period, the new coronavirus affects 368. According to the other research data, the coronavirus spreads more slowly than the ordinary flu. But it is very difficult to find out if this is true and to scientifically prove it. The Chinese authorities do as much as they can to get people to stay at home and to be in as little contact with one another as possible in an attempt to slow the spread of the virus. I'm going to visit a family. These are Russians who live in China. They decided against evacuating even though they live in a city near the border of the infected Hubei province. The problem is, I need to get to a different province, but China is doing a lot to prevent people from moving anywhere around the country. Right now, one cannot drive from one province to another. 
In order for citizens and visitors to know about any coronavirus danger zones, the Chinese made an iPhone app where you can see where coronavirus cases are. In order for citizens and visitors to know about any coronavirus danger zones, the Chinese made an app for iPhone where you can see where coronavirus cases are. The app will show its user the precise location where the case occurred, making the exact street, intersection, and building or home where the infected people were found. The city I am traveling to looks like this. You can still move from one province to another by train. This is because it is easier to control passenger traffic. Before any passenger boards the train, he or she has his body temperature checked and the passenger is asked if he or she has been to the Hubei province. The closer you get to an infected zone, the fewer people are on the streets. For example, this is how Shanghai looks presently. Its population is twice as big as Moscow, over 24 million. This is the famous downtown Shanghai. These are offices and headquarters of some of the biggest enterprises in the world. So this is one of the busiest spots in the city, with permanently active traffic. But now, we see how this place looks. The roads are empty. Sometimes a few cars go by. The public transportation is functioning. At the same time, there are hardly any people on the street. The Central Park is nearby. This is one of the most popular places among both tourists and locals. Normally, there are a lot of pedestrians there. Now there is absolutely no one. To put this in perspective, this is how these roads used to look before. Now, movie theaters and stores are closed. The same goes for many cafes and restaurants. Some places are operating, but I have the impression that only one place out of every 10 or 15 is. Most people come out only because they have to. Here is a traffic controller wearing a mask and goggles. The coronavirus can be transmitted through mucus. It takes just one scratch of an eye to get infected. This is a pedestrian zone. There is not a single soul, nobody at all. There are occasional people in cars, but you can see almost no one walking. You can encounter an occasional janitor who has nothing to clean because there is no one out on the street to litter. There are non-operating escalators, empty bus stops and bicycles lying on the ground. Parks are closed with locking iron fencing. The police patrol all the major streets. Nobody laughs, smiles, or utters a word unless it is necessary. In some Chinese cities, tents like this have popped up where food is being sold. They're selling cooked food, like chicken, beef, and various other types of meat. Normally, these people work in hotel restaurants, but now they have practically no clientele. So they cook and sell their meals on the street. With many stores in this neighborhood now closed, such prepared food is in great demand. Plus, doing this enables restaurants themselves to keep their businesses open and to try and remain profitable. The atmosphere is tense, as if everyone is waiting for something horrible to happen. In downtown Shanghai, many places where people normally gather are now closed. One example is the central ice skating rink right behind me. Locals and tourists were just skating here in January. Now, not only is there nobody here, but any paths to the rink are blocked with these white fences. There is just one lone man who is wiping this fencing. In the movies, such scenes normally show that the people know that a meteorite is about to strike here, but they do not know when exactly. I'm now in a different province where there are over twice as many cases of coronavirus infection as there are in Shanghai. This province is closer to the border with Hubei, the main quarantine area. As you can see, every single person who gets off the train is getting scanned with a thermal imager. Only after this, they are told if they can go or not.
On the street, it is like being transported to Silent Hill. It seems as though all the Chinese people just suddenly moved somewhere else. To be honest, it is a bit horrifying. Look, this is the main highway. This is the city. And we see just one car. Think about it. There is no one here, just empty space. Chinese people, where are you? Just one lonely dog walking down the road. He says, what did he say? He says we have to sit in the back. We cannot sit here. He's afraid of the infection. Cab drivers are taking the biggest risks now. This is how a regular cab driver looks in Wuhan itself. He keeps sanitizer and mask in the car and he looks like he has just arrived from space. I'm going to visit the Russian family I mentioned earlier, but the driver does not drop me off at the entrance. He does not even stop near the building. The most he will do is stop at the edge of the block. Well, hello. Hi. We are about to enter our residential area. We will need clearance to enter. So, in today's situation, you cannot even come home without clearance? No. Seriously. When you leave, they issue you a pass. When you return, you have to discard this pass. So now, you just throw the pass in the garbage, have your temperature checked, and then we will enter the building. Think about this. You are at your own home's entrance, and suddenly there is a tent with an inspector. Now you must deal with a checkpoint system. Even if you live here, you have to show this ticket each time you leave. It has a stamp on it that proves that you live here. You can only enter if you show it. It's crucial to show this every time entering and exiting. So we have this unique opportunity. I'm tossing this ticket into the trash can. There we go. That's it. At the checkpoint, everyone is monitored by several guards. The most hazardous place to get infected is the elevator. Recently, I came home from the grocery store. I saw that they first put tissues here, then they ran out of tissues and put the system in place. You take a toothpick and use it to press the elevator call button. My goodness, is this not to touch the button with your fingers? Yes, and there's an identical setup inside the elevator. Wow, what a mega life hack. Can you smell the disinfectant? Yeah, it smells like a hospital. This couple moved here from Russia a year ago. Alexei got a job as a basketball coach, Ulyana as a teacher of English. At first, their employer paid their rent, then they started paying themselves. It cost 270 US dollars. Surprisingly, or maybe not, Alexei and Ulyana first got the news of the deadly virus in China from Russia. The first I heard about this was from my parents. Yeah. The Chinese did not tell us about it at all. Mom called me and said, in the news here, they are talking about what is going on in Wuhan. We were like, what is happening here in Wuhan? We do not know anything that is going on here. And then we started reading our local chats. Our parents pressured us as hard as they could as the television was pressuring them there. They said that there was a state of emergency declared here and that because of this, we were not going to have any food. Every day, mom was weeping and trying to get me to return to Russia. This is how a typical supermarket looks near the infected zone in China. There is no lack of food. The shelves are absolutely stuffed. All essential items are here. However, only a few stores are open now. Many grocery stores have been closed in the neighborhood. That is why lines start to grow long. People have had to stand for a while. There is one line here and there's another one over there. The most interesting thing about this is that the prices have not changed. Am I correct in saying this? Yes, you are correct. The employees touch everything, vegetables, fruit, cereals, and meat. I hope they wash their hands. 
Normally, it is all displayed uncovered, but now they pack everything. It's all pre-bagged. Normally, you just pour it. Well, I see. Normally, it's all loose. Does this make you change how you buy groceries now? Are you buying in larger quantities? Yes, I go shopping once every three to four days. I try to buy more. This is so that in case something goes wrong, we have enough food to last for an extended period of time. We started washing everything we brought from the store, including bottles and juice packs. We even started peeling vegetables. I mean, cucumbers, fruits like apples. We started to peel them because people touch them. The Chinese have a very convenient purchasing system, which is completely contactless. The cashier enters the amount to pay in the cash register. The customer scans a QR code on their phone that works as a wallet. The amount is debited automatically. This is good because if you touch a bill that has been in the hands of an infected person and then scratch your nose, you can get infected. As we walk now, everything is closed. In the daytime, it is the same here. Only two stores are open. It looks like only grocery stores are allowed to run. Everything else, like hair salons and so on, are closed. All over the block there are these loudspeakers installed that remind people very persistently not to leave their homes, not to take risks, not to pay visits, and not to throw parties. Day after day, the preventative measures get tougher. For example, the day after we left, the number of times one is allowed to leave their building was limited to three per week. The system is tougher. Now they only let you out if you can name the apartment owner. They will issue a pass for you to go out only once or twice. Now, Alexei goes shopping alone and he buys as much as he can. Everything is available for any Chinese preference. For example, here is a trough with some water snakes, probably eels. Let me remind you that the coronavirus may have originated from a snake virus. Now that I am next to these guys, I hope these are not the snakes that started this whole mess. Know what I mean? It is commonly reported that the virus originated in the Wuhan market. This version has not been officially confirmed, but seeing the real conditions here does lend a lot of credence to the story. Shanks of meat on a tray that is displayed for sale on the surface of the street is something very common here. They sell pigeons for butchering. Frogs and swimming turtles for dinner are as common as tomatoes for us. They're practically on every second counter. Here, as you can see, this person is getting a python. And here's some other snakes. Here's something for all you foodies, a sheep's head. Here's something for the common people, barbecued rat. There's a saying about Chinese locals that the only four-legged thing they do not eat is a chair. The main local delicacy here is bat soup, and the bats are cooked in a way that makes them look as if they were just about to spread their wings and then froze in place, as if they were not boiled or fried at all. There's a story, let me emphasize, just a supposition, we don't know it for sure, that it was because of people eating these bats that the new virus got spread. Chinese scientists did not discover that the virus appeared after bats infected snakes with their own coronavirus. This earlier virus mutated, then it eventually made its way to humans. As a result, we are having a real epidemic with 71,429 reported cases worldwide, and 70,635 in China, and 1,772 fatalities due to the virus. Has the situation frightened you? Of course it has. Damn. Anyway, you see all these videos. Instagram sends more to me every day. We constantly see our friends suddenly leaving for Thailand. And you're like, damn, you just said that you weren't going anywhere. Why did you suddenly change your mind? Of course there's fear. I examine Marcel every day to check his temperature. I always run to get a thermometer. Damn, you worry no matter what. Even though we don't go out, we're still afraid. However, we must make an important point. It is true that we have witnessed a thousand deaths and about 50,000 cases of infection. Is it true that something really horrible is coming to kill us all? Here are some important statistics to consider. Every year, the regular seasonal flu that every one of us has had kills a surprising 650,000 people. This number is 650 times as many as the new coronavirus everyone is talking about. This data comes from the most reputable organization in the world, the World Health Organization. There is a link to who offered below this video. You can check it out for yourself. You may ask, how can somebody die of the flu? All you need is a lot of rest, a week away from school or work, and you're good to go. According to these statistics, most of the 650,000 flu deaths are in cases of people over 75 years old, as well as people in the world's poorest regions, like Sub-Saharan Africa, where aspirin and respiratory masks are extremely hard to find. You will hardly find a piece of paper containing a prescription. Some of these people may never have even seen soap to wash their hands with. The most common flu victims are people whose immune system is already weakened by some disease, like diabetes, asthma, or chronic lung disease. For example, if someone who has a renal impediment comes down with the flu, their kidneys can simply fail. I was absolutely stunned to learn that during the most massive flu epidemic, over 550 million people were infected, including some people in the Arctic. This was one-third of the total global population at the time. 
In 1918, it was called Spanish flu. Approximately 50 to 100 million people died. Flu victims' faces would turn blue, they would start coughing up blood, then their lungs filled with fluid as they died. Taking advantage of the technological process of that time, the disease spread extremely rapidly, facilitated by infected people traveling on trains and airships. In some countries, public places were closed for a year. Courts, schools, churches, drama theaters, and movie houses. In one U.S. city, they actually banned shaking hands. In Australia, a doctor once counted 26 funeral processions in just one hour on one street. Whole villages died out. In some towns, there was not a single healthy doctor left. Sometimes there were no undertakers left to bury the dead. People were buried without coffins or religious services. People swallowed aspirin in handfuls. In some places, doctors prescribed it in doses that were seven times the norm. As a result, people also died because of aspirin poisoning. This dosage caused internal bleeding. There is one opinion that it was the Spanish flu that made World War I and sooner by weakening millions of people in the armies of many countries around the world. It is actually a major problem now to find a driver who will agree to drive us towards Wuhan. We managed to find a private driver. For three days before we found him, everyone refused. This is the only man who agreed. What was the first thing he did when we got in his car? He checked our temperatures. We are getting closer to the infected Hubei province. We are about to pull up at a checkpoint where we will have our car inspected and our temperature checked. Be careful, they can see you, so... I see, yeah, I'm watching. First, they check your temperature, then they order you to pull over. There's going to be something else, some additional inspection. Anyone driving in a car toward the infection zone needs to sign up in a special quarantine app. To avoid long waiting lines, the Chinese guards pilot drones equipped with a large QR code sign. You scan it as you approach the checkpoint and the app gets installed on your phone. At that point, your phone automatically turns into a GPS tracker. If you enter a closed infected zone, they will be able to locate you no matter what you do. Next, cars are sprayed with a water cannon. On the way, you see villages that the residents blocked with big rocks. Here is a whole fence built to keep people out. They fence not only communities, but also private garages, parking lots, and gardens. As we approach the coronavirus epicenter in China, there are more and more limited access zones. Look, here. They stretched a ribbon that people must not pass. A tent is installed where inspectors are sitting. A loudspeaker warns everyone that you are not allowed to cross this line. There is also a squad with a flag that watches people risky behavior. Look, here they are now. You, you look, other people don't go, yes? You, you look, the people don't go. Are you watching to make sure people do not go here? Yes. In the smaller cities, there are more people on the streets than there were in Shanghai. This is a typical residential area in a Chinese city. Next to the entrance doors are posted a great many posters describing all the prevention measures. The authorities also ask people to declare not only your recent visits to the Hubei province, but also to tell them anything you know about your neighbors or anything about anyone else visiting Hubei. You are under obligation to let the authorities know these things. Meanwhile, life goes on. Makeshift markets are working as they used to. Here, people are selling some greens and carrots displayed right on bags resting on the pavement, like there's nothing wrong here. Markets stay open and people continue selling their wares. There is some grass here. Hi, sir. How is business going? There is nobody. Very few people leave their homes now. 
By the way, here I first started to see people without masks. Ma'am, why aren't you wearing a mask? I took it off and threw it away. It was already used. They say you should not wear the same mask for a long time, so I tossed it. They sell masks in our store, but I didn't buy any. The closer you get to Wuhan, the more it feels like the Chernobyl series on HBO. They spray tons of chemicals on the streets in the mornings and at night. This is how the Chinese services are disinfecting residential areas. This man is wearing a backpack that contains a liquid disinfectant. He is walking and disinfecting every square foot of the sidewalk. Presently, they do this at least two times a day. At some spots, where the infection hazard is elevated, they do it more often, like this. They disinfect not just the sidewalks, but also garbage bins, doors, and store walls. There was no more liquid left, but this woman continues to spray a flower pot insistently. It was getting increasingly difficult to film in these areas. Even if the police officers do not notice you, these local squads do. They have a million questions for you about who you are and why are you filming and why. I think he is filming something. I think he is a blogger. We just made a stop here on our way. I understand. Please, stay safe. These are very difficult times. Therefore, when I was near hospitals, I tried to get what footage was possible. The shot has turned sideways, but we could not help this. There are a great number of police officers. This is a huge building, around 10 floors tall, where coronavirus patients are brought. They reserve this back door for bringing in people who have a fever, taking them through some convoluted path to separate these from the other patients. You need to walk around behind the hospital, then go along some back alleys and only then can you enter the department where they treat the patients or those suspected of being coronavirus patients. Inside, there's a hallway with small rooms on one side where people get injected with a huge dose of antibiotics. These rooms are on our right. Right here is the place where you can pass the most accurate test, mercury thermometers. I also decided to get checked. In this department, all the people are actually walking around in plague overalls. Their faces are covered with see-through shields in addition to the mouth and nose covering masks. Generally, most doors are closed and one cannot see what is behind them. It is very difficult now to find out what is going on inside these hospitals. There are a lot of videos from hallways like people who died of the coronavirus in zip bags, but it is not possible to find out if these are real. The fact is that in the first days of the outbreak, the pressure was enormous. Nurses were driven to hysteria because of the stress. The same goes for doctors. If you have a fever or any of the symptoms, you can be quarantined for two weeks. So I think that I was really lucky. I went to check my temperature. The thermometer displayed 99.3. I honestly want to believe that it is simply because I got too nervous. Later on though, I had a real opportunity to become extremely nervous. Later, in a community several miles from the prohibited zone border, our car was surrounded by the People's Squad guys. They called the police and then the nightmare started. In the 15 minutes while we were waiting for the police to arrive, these frenzied activists were harassing us, knocking on the windows, telling us to get out and explain everything. Don't go anywhere, stand here. The police arrived and immediately they took my phone away. They took my phone away literally the first minute they arrived. After five minutes, they took my ID. Fifteen minutes into this ordeal, they opened the car doors and started checking the contents of bags. And then the worst thing happened, as the Chinese police strategy is to simply wear you out. 
You wait for hours without anybody giving you any information about what is going on. They won't tell you anything. For one, they started pressuring me, saying that our driver reported us to them. He said that they were going to another location from the place we were detained. He gave them the name. It turned out that there is a military facility there. Of course, I had no freaking idea. It was just a coincidence. Then, they started asking me why I knew the name of the facility. I told them that I did not know. He asked me why I told the driver to go there in that case. But that was not what I actually told him. I told him, dude, take me to any community on the border with Hubei province, the quarantine province where you cannot go. All I need to do is see any community. I want to see how people live there. So, can you imagine this? Right. Some strange dude comes and is going to film a military facility? This is considered espionage. Espionage. I do not know the punishment for espionage according to the Chinese law, but believe me, it is definitely not community service. In the end, they just had my ID checked and then they let me go. According to an estimate by scientists, over half a million people will get infected at the peak of the epidemic. This means that those people who have been in contact with infected people, even though they might not be ill themselves at the moment, are not allowed to even leave their houses. The measures taken by the Chinese authorities do make sense. As the virus is transmitted in a flash and its victims require a long and expensive period of treatment, their main goal is to nip the coronavirus in the bud before it destroys the world's largest economy.